1987, a brutal war broke up between the National Resistance Army, now the Uganda People's Defense Force, led by Yoweri Kaguta Museven, and the Lord's Resistance Army, led by Joseph Kony. The war that lasted decades forced people into internally displaced camps where life was harsh, characterized by various human rights abuses and destruction of livelihood, among others. The war came to an end after the signing of a peace agreement in Juba for cessation of hostilities by both warring parties. This gave a window of hope to the people of northern Uganda to return to their homes to rebuild their lives. Today we are so happy we are harvesting our dinners today. As you can see, we are working with a couple of people, the women and one man among them. These were basically people who had been formerly abducted and they're now here back and we are so glad that someone came up to support them and as you can see we are harvesting this group affected group group when I visited the US a number of young persons spoke to me about their dream to come to Africa to volunteer, to gain experience, and to contribute towards the development of Africa. I realized after the conflict, there were many donors that were giving a different attention to different areas of priorities in conflict, yet they were leaving behind young, skillful persons that worked with them in a non-for-profit. I started bringing together minds that I thought believed in the idea of volunteering service to change community. Currently. We have about five girls going to school using local, um, uh, local persons, local volunteers, committing themselves to visit them at school. In the livelihood project, we try to focus on vulnerable families that make their children drop out of school. Among the most vulnerable is those who return from captivity, who seem to have not benefited from thorough reintegration into our community. We work with this group in Onyama of formerly abducted persons who are trying to get back that dignity in life. In this group, we try to support them through horticulture project. A few months ago, we received support from a single donor, a German national, who gave us um, a little support. Mr. Wadborn gave us support so that we could allow these women to cultivate their field, generate, you know, cultivate their field, get crops, after which if they sold, they would generate some income. We want to thank Mr. Watbone so much for the support he has given us. Now, we have invested our granites and are, selling, are putting them on sale. We hope with this initiative to launch our microcredit program. The microcredit program is to encourage the vulnerable women who are once captives to save their own little money and be able to get loans since they have no security to guarantee them loans from financial institutions. From $50 you can see the harvest that we have made and we think this is going to be so good for improving the nutrition, nutrition needs of their families uh, but most importantly generating some little income. Speaking to them they told me what they really want to do is to sell these granites and raise some money and then keep it in their own account. As an end result PVI Uganda decided to start up a microcredit, um, a microcredit program that helps them to save more money and make more money uh, to, from which they could access loans to continue doing this kind of service. So we want to say today is a day of accountability for us. After one year we want to give an accountability of the money that we received from a, a personal donor from Germany and really want to say that we can still do so, so much more and if we continue to get the support. From $50 we are getting uh, close to five sacks of granite um, that will help them improve on their livelihood, their nutritional needs of their families and earn some source of income. In the education component, we are paying young vulnerable girls to school. We choose to commit ourselves to supporting the girl child to school because we realize there are more girls 
that drop out. In essence, the challenges that the girl child faces are way more than that of the boy child. And therefore we said, look, we need to give a chance to the girl child. When I spoke to the district education officer, he said the completion rate is 36% last year. Yet that is the highest we ever had since 2008. However, we continue to meet challenges. People like Mr. Watmon and those who help support our girls in school don't come so often. We want to use this opportunity to call out onto you to come and volunteer with us. We provide a platform for even international volunteers to produce placements. We get placements for you so that you can come and work in Africa. After which, we allow you to tour our cultural sites in our cultural exchange program. I want to request anybody with good intention if you want to volunteer your service. When I talk of volunteering, local volunteers, we pick them from local communities that come and work with us. They totally work for free, but they just want to change lives. They just want to contribute towards a different community. Internationals, sometimes we receive international volunteers that come and spend a little less two weeks with us. It's like two weeks, three months, six months. We are still to expect some of that is going to take nine months. PVI Uganda does a scholarship program. In the scholarship program, we are, we are specializing on paying girls who are really disadvantaged in school. Um, especially those who have been affected by the circumstance of the war that doesn't give them equal opportunity uh, to compete favorably with other, uh, other students, learners around the country. So we have that as well. We also participate in any community events where human resources are needed. We mobilize young people and we mobilize them to come and serve their societies without expecting a pay. We use this opportunity to call out for support. We are all volunteers. We can only continue to function if another volunteer accepts to hold our hands and if you hold our shoulders together, we will change this society using our local means. Conclusively, I want to talk about the urban poor, children in conflict with the law. This is also an area of interest. We will receive local and international volunteers who want to engage, who want to uh, commit themselves to trying to, to try to transform the lives of the young persons whom we visit in the prisons who are in conflict with the law who just never have a home, not only a home, families to attend to them. We want to provide ourselves to be family members. We want to provide for them a home. But we are limited in resources. We cannot help the children. Yet we meet them every day. We meet representatives of government as prison warders. But there's not much we can do. We need to provide a home for them. We need to provide them basic services. We need to give them a reason to keep alive and do something meaningful with their lives. We acknowledge the fact that they are resourceful human beings whose efforts whose strength, whose energy we need to focus on something more constructive, whether it be something that generates income for them, but something they're passionate about. We also want to acknowledge that the fact that they're very talented persons, they're talented in music, they're talented in sports, they're talented in, in athletics. We want them to have a ball when they, all they need in life is a ball, to, to build on that talent. We want them to have a guitar if, that, if their chances in life is all about a guitar and playing good music. You can do this if you believe in volunteerism.